This is Sean Kelly Reviews, Dune Part 2, read for my written review, published on March 1st, 2024. Like and subscribe to get more content like this. Dune Part 2 was co-written and directed by Denis Villeneuve and stars Timothy Chalamet, Zendaya, Rebecca Ferguson, Austin Butler, Christopher Walken, Dave Bautista, Florence Pugh, Josh Brolin, Leia Sidhu, Skellen Skarsgård, Shara Rampling, and Javier Bardem. Paul Atreides joins the Freeman people to get revenge against the House of Harkonnen in Dune Part 2. After the fall of House Atreides on Arrakis, the result of a joint attack by the forces of Baron Harkonnen and Emperor Shaddam IV, Paul Atreides and his mother, Lady Jessica, take refuge with the Freeman of Siege Tabor, led by Stilgar. Paul begins to learn the Freeman's ways and falls for Shani. However, Paul begins to worry that the Freeman's view of him as the prophesized Messiah would bring disaster. Adopting the nicknames Muabdib and Usu, Paul assists the Freeman in sabotaging the spice harvesting operations overlooked by the Baron's nephew, Beast Robin. This results in the Baron bringing in Robin's psychotic younger brother, Fade Rothia, to take over as the ruler of Arrakis. Meanwhile, Paul re reunites with his old mentor Gurney Halleck and devises a plan to permanently take control of Arrakis away from the Harnikins. The Nivenov returns to co-write and direct the second half of his epic adaptation of the 1965 science fiction novel written by Frank Herbert. Picking up immediately after the conclusion of the previous film, Doom Part 2 begins with Princess Irulan writing a diary about the Harkonnen annihilation of House Atreides, which was assisted by her father, Emperor Shaddam IV. Having barely survived the attack, Paul Atreides and his mother, Lady Jessica, find themselves joined up with Arrakis' indigenous Freeman people. Thanks to the work of the Bene Gesserits, including Gase Helen Mahim and Lady Margot Frenning, a section of the Freeman people, including Stilgar, believe Paul to be the prophesied Lizan Algab. Lady Jessica, pregnant with a child who speaks to her from the room, fuels these beliefs when she is made the new reverend mother of the Freeman. However, Paul's latest vision suggests that if he accepts this Masonic path, it will bring about war and death. Some are not a fan of book adaptations being split into multiple films. However, combining the 2 hour 35 minute running time of Doom Part 1 with the 2 hour 46 minute running time of this film results in a complete 5 hour 21 minute story which exceeds the length of the 2000s sci-fi miniseries which was previously the most complete adaptation of the novel. Denis Villeneuve's Dune also eclipses the much maligned 1984 adaptation directed by David Lynch, which tried to fit the entire novel into a 2 hour 17 minute running time. It is amazing to think that Denis Villeneuve is a French Canadian filmmaker who at one point was best known for directing acclaimed Quebecois dramas such as Polytechnique and Ensemble. His move to Hollywood filmmaking in 2009's Prisoners seemed to be building up to making Dune, particularly his sci-fi films Arrival and Blade Runner 2049. Now Denis Villeneuve has created what can probably be considered the definitive adaptation of Frank Herbert's novel. Even though Dune Part 2 was not yet greenlit when the first film was released, seeds for the film were already planted with Dune Part 2 featuring much extended roles for Zendaya Shani and Javier Bardem Stilgar. The two are portrayed as opposites of Stilgar being a true believer in the possibility that Paul Atreides is the Messiah, while Shani is the skeptical voice of reason. This characterization helps to make Shani more than just a love interest, particularly during the second half of the film, when she becomes more concerned about Paul giving in to the prophecy. The increased character development for, for Shani is one of many changes that the new Venov made from the original novel. Another change from the novel is how he wanted to emphasize how Paul Atreides going down the messianic path would have grave consequences going against interpretations that the story of Dune is a hero's journey and instead leaving you questioning who you should be cheering for. 
These changes help to tie Doom Part 2 in better with Doom Messiah, which Denis Villeneuve wants to adapt the next to conclude a trilogy, and he has already planted seeds by casting Florence Pugh as Princess Urulan, as well as a very brief cameo by Anna Taylor Joy as a character familiar to those who have read the novels. As a whole, Doom Part 2 can be considered darker and more epic than the previous one. Part of this darker nature comes from the addition of Austin Butler as the violent and psychotic Fade Raphael Harnikin, previously best known for having been played by the musician Sting wearing a Speedo in the 1984 film. Butler's Fade Rafa adopts a similar white-skinned, bald appearance of the other Harkonnen, with Butler even doing a decent job at replicating Skeleton Skarsgård's speaking patterns. If there is a criticism that I have to give Doom Part 2, it is that perhaps Denis Villeneuve overdoes his Doom Messiah setup, ending the film without a full sense of resolution. However, the film is still a quite cinematic spectacle, and it should be seen on the biggest screen possible. I give the film four stars.